So when you open up the project, you are going to see your comps folder. So inside there, I try to uh, simplify it as much as possible. You're going to have your main comps, and this is where you know comps 1 through 26 sit. You are going to see the projected comps, which are comps that are getting uh, the light projection effect like you see here. So it's going to uh, kind of double it up a little bit, soften up, give a more an authentic uh, projected look. Now you're going to see your video comps here. So I did a few video comps for the sake of the project, but you know, much of the reason why I create these collections is so that you, for one, have a, a large stock of mats just to play around with and design, animate, composite with for your own work. So for this particular project, I didn't really feel the need to do too many video comps. I did uh, six, as you can see there. And I also created a folder, though, called Drag and Drop Ready. And what that is is essentially you're going to come across uh, a ton more video comps that are all ready to go that you can essentially drag and drop the comp into whatever comp you want to, add your own video or text, and be done. And then you're going to see your final render comps. So we have a 720p uh, as well as a, a 1080p. And then you have the full layout. And we'll get down to that a little bit later on. And this is where your controllers lie and all your, your main comps, uh, 1 through 26. Now, moving into the Super 8 projection mats, I organized and put them all in here as well. So they'll be in there for you. So that's pretty much it. We're going to uh, now move into the first uh, part of the walkthrough of the collection. Uh, you're going to see a uh, video comps folder, number four, and that's where all the video comps lay. Uh, you'll see in this case video comp two. Just double click right on the video comp, or you can go up to the video comps folder and double click there. Either way, um, once you double click, you're going to go inside that pre comp. You can just drag and drop your photo or video. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit, cover it. It's good, it's freaky. All right, and what you want to do is make sure you just drag and drop your, uh, your photo or video underneath the uh, vignette and grain layers. That way you get that scratchy grain if you choose to, or the vignette. I also put there a, uh, a scratch mat for you to uh, play around with, so you can turn that on or turn it off. If you put it on, it's going to just uh, bump up the render time just a little bit. But you know, once you go back into uh, your comp, you're going to see it right there, ready to go. So when you want to change it, you can just double click inside the uh, text pre-comp. I'm just going to change that really quick and whatever you type, it's good to go. So there's going to be some cases where you're going to come across a pre-comp entitled projected comps. And those projected comps are going to be attached to some of these uh, regular main comps. In this case, I'm just going to go to comp number one. You'll see in the uh, projected comps folder, there's comp number one. So if I go into the timeline here, you're going to see it says comp one projected. What's going on here is comp number one is being projected from the light transmission against this dirty film plate. Okay, much like a traditional film projector, you it's projecting an image. So I'm just gonna go to the top view for one second so you can kind of get a better idea what's going on. The light in the comp is pointing and projecting against the, uh, the background here, this dirty film plate. Okay, and it's projecting comp number one. Okay, much like a traditional film projector, you, it's projecting an image. Um, and there's a few of them here, so I label them, you know, comp 1, 2, 3, uh, 12, 15, uh, you know, there, there's about 6 or 7 here off the top of my head. And, uh, you know, those are just stylized to uh, give a softer projected look. And, uh, and it's going to be no different when you want to change things up. You can just double click inside the pre-comp here and uh, change around your text, your video, you know, add whatever elements you want to. And 
In a majority of these comps, you are going to see a no layer on top called 2D tracking. And uh, again, that's just the tracking data of that particular shot. So you're going to see in uh, this case here, in uh, we have this film projector. And we have some text attached both to the uh, left and right side. And these text precomps are just parented to that 2D tracking now. So in this case, let's just say you wanted to attach a uh, video comp to the tracking data. You can simply just go to your drag and drop ready folder, grab a video comp you haven't used yet, drag and drop it, and just put it on the timeline here. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Um, just move it over here and it's uh, about good. Just move it under here for this and uh, I'm just going to put a little mask up top. I'm just going to get a little rectangle mask and uh, apply that around the edges and just going to feather the edges and uh, bring the expansion in a little bit just to soften up the edges a little bit. Now I have my video comp ready. I can go ahead and just you know, drag and drop a photo or video that you may have. I'm just going to use this here. I'm going to scale this up for uh, just to fill the edges. And again, I'm just going to make sure I put this photo beneath my uh, vignette and splice mat and grain. That way it just kind of uh, looks a little bit uh, less clean. All right, so when you go back out into the comp, you're going to see your image sitting there. What I want to do is parent my video comp to the 2D tracking node. So that now this video comp is going to move with my shot. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to apply a, uh, a blending mode. And you're going to see in the majority of the mats that I use that specifically I'll use an add blending mode, maybe an overlay or even multiply. But in this case, I'm just going to take my video comp and put a, an add blending mode on. So it just kind of bleeds into the, uh, the projector a little bit. And again, make sure you just parent that video comp that you're using, or in the, if you're using a text comp, just parent it to the tracking null. And you're going to see that now that your video comp or text, whatever you apply to that 2D tracking null, is going to move with the, uh, the particular shot that's in the comp. So in a few of these comps, uh, I went ahead and did some 3D tracking. And now this camera it has all the 3D tracking data applied to it. And all that data is coming from this particular shot. So to go to a top view for one minute, you can see what's going on here. The camera, as it does in the, uh, the regular shot, just dollies alongside the projector. Uh, and I have some text pre-comps here that are kind of uh, angled a little bit so it looks like they're kind of projecting out. But if you want to go ahead in this case if I just add some more text to this comp here you want to make sure that you turn your text to a, a 3D layer. So we're going to go ahead and check the 3D layer on and uh, instantly you're going to see it pop away. So no worries if you just go to the top view uh, you're going to see that it goes into its default position, so it's really alongside the camera, and we can't see it through our camera. So if you go to your top view, and you can just maneuver and align it next to the, uh, the pre-comps that are already there. So you can use these pre-comps just to kind of better gauge if you want to add your own text here. So I'm just going to turn this around a little bit and just move it back. So I go into 2D views so you get a better idea. In my right view, I have the active camera. And in my left view, I have the, the uh, top view. So it gives me a better way of dealing with the Z space. It's here. So it's pretty much parallel to uh, the text pre-comp here, as you can see from the top view. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. So now if I go back into one view for a second, we also have this nice little depth of field being applied and that's coming from the, uh, the camera. So you can you know, bump that up if you wanted to by going into your camera options. And I'm just going to bump up the, uh, the blur level a little bit. And, uh, 
are the aperture as well. And you're going to see the more you bump up that aperture or blur level, that you're going to get a uh, more uh, depth of field effect. So it looks pretty good. And now you're going to see that once you start moving, your, uh, your text is just going to move with your shot. There's a few different color washes there that you can check on, you know, play around, see if uh, you want some black and white, some stainy look. Uh, more importantly, you're going to see an out-of-focus controller to start. And that's uh, essentially a camera lens blur. And you can see throughout the comp, perhaps I want that look of going in and out of focus to uh, come into effect. It's essentially just starting the, the blur radius from zero and then just moving it up. In this case, I'm going to bump it up to 33 and then move it back down to zero. So, you know, within a second or two, it's going to go in and out of focus. Uh, moving down, you will also see a projector zoom controller. And uh, essentially, this slider here is going to control the zoom of the camera. So, you know, when you see those shots where the, uh, the camera kind of quickly zooms in, it zooms back out. You can do that in a number of ways, but I just thought I'd try to simplify it as best as I could. So in this case, if I wanted to uh, just start normal and then make a keyframe, bump it up in the middle to about you know, 2,900, 3,000 ballpark, just bring it back down to normal again, you're going to see it move in quickly and then uh, come back out. Now moving down, you're also going to see a controller entitled uh, Mirror Gate and this will offset the uh, the composition if i just go to uh, the offset here and i have a shift center two i can move it x or y so up and down left or right so i'm just going to move this uh my x-axis i'm going to shift my x a little bit and then i have a blending mode so if i change that to about 40 percent blending mode i'm going to see the original which is centered leak right in and then the shift uh, of my X point is going to, you know, show on the left and right of my screen. So you can animate those points to go back and forth. Uh, next, going down below that, you're going to see the sprocket controller, and this is going to control the uh, the sprockets of the uh, the film itself. So if we want to kind of have it seem like it, it went out of the sprocket of the film reel, what we can do is just animate uh, starting at zero. And you can see that if I just change this to, I don't know, say negative two, you're going to see it's going to have a nice little uh, effect of, of coming off the hinge of a, a film reel. Kind of be sensitive to this number. So again, you can change this value, positive or negative. To see whatever type of effect you want spread out the space between the keyframes uh, below that you're going to see the rotation controller and that's essentially just going to rotate the image and below that you're going to see the film wobble essentially it's just going to jitter your image so again these are all here for you to experiment play around with and see what it works for you i try to simplify these controllers uh, make it easy and fun for you with this particular project so that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any problems, any uh, issues, any questions, you know, feel free to email me at any time. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this fantastic collection. You lucky dog you.